Hey guys, it's Alex C with TFP TV, and today, as you have seen already, we are shooting a Gewehr 41 Walther version. There was a Mauser counterpart to this, but that's another episode. Anyways, Germany wanted a self-loading rifle and submitted requests, and Mauser and Walther both responded. Uh, this example is kind of cool. It's got some battle damage where maybe a 30 caliber round from an M1 Garand struck the gentleman carrying it, and it was brought back as a war trophy. I don't know. That's just kind of what could have happened. Who knows? Anyways, these are strange guns. You'll notice that they look a lot like a Gewehr 43 that we've done quite a lot with in the past here on TFB TV, and they do have the same uh, flapper locked system, but there is no hole drilled in the barrel for a gas port, and we'll get to that here in a second, but these are generally more well finished out than the G43s. Germany wasn't in quite a tough spot yet as they were when G43 production really kicked into high gear. You'll notice things like the bolt uh, sleeve looks nicer, everything's blued a little better, uh, despite this being in uh, about 40% condition as far as bluing remaining. Nonetheless, these are cool guns. Uh, the way they function is using something called the Bang System, uh, designed by a Danish gentleman, if I'm not mistaken. The sight adjusts up like a simple ladder, just like a Mauser 98. To load it, you pull back the handle, and it loads with two five-round Mauser 98 stripper clips through this guide into the fixed 10-round magazine. Now to elaborate a little bit more on how this rifle works without a hole drilled in the barrel for a gas port, you need to take a look at the nose cone and you'll notice it is an odd shape and there's a detent plunger that kind of looks like it can connect into several parts of the octagonal plug on the end. And to basically understand how this works, let's go ahead and take a look at it inside the room here. It is a sleeve that kind of encapsulates the barrel. So let's go ahead and take that off and you can see how it slides right over there. Now inside that sleeve you've actually got the piston. So the gas kind of hits the nose cone, gets redirected backwards through that tube, and then works against that piston which goes backwards. So the bullet comes out, gases are redirected into that sleeve, and that actuates the piston and moves it backwards. So we didn't put the piston right on the barrel as it would ride normally, and you can see with each shot, the gas would be redirected backwards by hitting that forward of the nose or the front of the nose cone, smashing into this op rod, and the op rod runs the length of the top of the gun. So that is what actually unlocks the gun. So it is confusing, but it is interesting and very neat. However, it does recoil a lot because gas that would normally leave the barrel is redirected back into the action. <laughs> and uh, really thumps you pretty good. So let's, uh, let's shoot this thing a little more. So shooting this thing from a prone position is downright punishing. Uh, like I said, gas that would normally just go right out the end of the barrel is captured and redirected, therefore increasing recoil, which, yeah, that's not very fun. Also, I kind of made the mistake of doing the 300 meter test towards the end of the day when the heat and everything like that made the nose cone just blisteringly hot. And yeah, uh, it was pretty hard to shoot this gun accurately. I did manage to land some shots on the target,
But uh, I would not really want to have this gun if I were offered realistically pretty much everything else uh, in the German uh, small arms suite back then, including a carabiner 98K. We hope you all enjoyed this video about the Gewehr 41 Walther version. Big thanks to Ventura Munitions for providing the ammunition for this video. Again, this is Alex C. with TFP TV. We hope to see you all next time.